because you're born into a society where you're basically told, look, your parents are at a certain level in life, and that's as far as you're going to get to go to. If you're not born into the right family, if you don't run in the right social circles, if you don't go to the right schools, you're only going to get to go so far in life. Well, there are people all over the world that say, hey, I don't like that arrangement because I have talent, I have ability, I have ambition. There are things we want to accomplish, and it isn't fair that I can't do it. But I heard about this place called America where it doesn't matter where you were born, where you come from, who your family was, what your parents did for a living. If you have a good idea and you have the talent and the willingness to work for it and you're willing to play by the rules, you can accomplish anything. And the result is this extraordinary place where you, don't, you literally can't go 10 feet without bumping into somebody whose story is that story. The debate in Washington right now, that largely from the administration, what they tell us is there's really only two ways forward. You can either rely on Wall Street and big businesses, or you can rely on Washington and big government. Who do you trust to solve America's problems? That's a false choice. That's a choice that ignores our history and our legacy as a people. Neither Wall Street nor government has made America great. You know what's made America great? You have. People whose stories are never be told. Because all of us, whether we're here in our first generation, second generation, or third generation, have stories that are not just typical of one another, but of this nation as a whole. I talk about my family legacy and my family history as a core part of my political identity because it is the source of my political identity and the reason why I've made conclusions about public policy. My parents were not connected people. My parents were born, quite frankly, into poverty. My mom into rural poverty, my dad into urban poverty in Havana. And Cuba was not a perfect country. It didn't deserve communism. But they had challenges in their own country, so they came in search of a better life to ensure that their children and their grandchildren would have opportunities they never had. My parents were obsessed with that, with the idea that their kids would be able to do all the things they couldn't do. All I can tell you is that when he worked nights and weekends and holidays and he struggled and he sacrificed, I know this for sure, that what kept them going was not simply the desire to pay the rent at the end of the month. It was the notion that if they did this long enough, that their kids would one day be able to wear a suit and tie to work that their kids would one day be able to have a career, not just a job. That their hard work, that the mission of their life was to sacrifice and work hard so that their kids would have the opportunities that they themselves did not. Now that's a great story and I'm proud of that story and that's the story of my family. That also happens to be the story of your family and the story of millions of American families, especially Americans of Hispanic descent. And so the question is what economic system that exists today is the one where that's possible? And I can tell you it's not possible in an economy where it's dominated by the government. Nor is it possible in an economy that's dominated by the same big businesses. And you look around the world and the evidence is clear. In those economies where the government dominates, where the government is at the center of economic life, the same families and the same companies succeed decade after decade. And the reason is because big government helps to create that environment. See, if, if you have a bunch of rules and regulations and complicated tax codes, big businesses may not like it, but they can deal with it. They can hire lawyers and accountants to navigate that stuff. And if they really don't like the law, they can hire lobbyists to change it. Who can't deal with that stuff? It's the guy trying to open up a business out of the spare bedroom of their home. It's the lady trying to open up a business out of the garage. Who can't deal with it? It's the people who are trying to take $5,000 out of their savings account and open up a new business. They're the ones that can't deal with the paperwork and the complicated tax code. They're the ones that are getting hurt. And so when people ask me, well, why should Americans of Hispanic descent consider the Republican Party? It's simple. It's the only party that seems to have any understanding of how the free enterprise system is supposed to work. And the free enterprise system is the only economic system in the world where the hopes and dreams of millions of Americans is even possible. You want to work hard to make sure your kids are better off than you. You want to work hard to make sure your kids have opportunities you didn't have. Only the free enterprise system can accomplish that. It's the reason why there aren't boatloads of American refugees arriving on the shores of other countries. It's the reason, by the way, and I think this is an irony, and I, this is especially true in South Florida where I live, where I tell people all the time, there's a reason why thousands upon thousands of people every year, legally and illegally, enter this country to get away from 
to get away from the economic policies that we're now trying to implement on ourselves here. So the economic case is easy. Not just to Hispanic Americans, but to all Americans. If what you want is a country where hard work and good ideas are rewarded by prosperity and the opportunity to leave your kids better off than yourselves, there's only ec one economic system in the history of the world that's consistently made that available, and that's the American free enterprise system. And there's only one political party in America that even pretends to believe that. Now, do Republicans always get it right on that front? No. Now, look, there are significant impediments to Republicans succeeding among the Hispanic community. And one is this issue of immigration. We have to confront that. It would be ridiculous for me to come here today and not even address it. And it's a real problem. And, and it's not an easy issue to solve. On the one hand, we have to have immigration laws. We cannot be the only country in the world that does not have immigration laws and does not enforce them. On the other hand, we, I think it's a mistake for the Republican Party to solely be known as the anti-illegal immigration party. The Republican Party needs to be the pro-legal immigration party. The party of people... Why are we for legal immigration? Because it's an important part of our heritage. It's also a critical part of our future. Any demographer, any economist will tell you that a functional legal immigration system is critical for America's future economically. And right now, we don't have a legal immigration system that works. On the other hand, the rhetoric of the immigration debate scares people. And the rhetoric has gotten heated and has not allowed us to go to the core of the principles and the policies that need to be fixed. So our immigration laws, we need to have them and they need to be enforced. We also need to modernize our legal immigration system. And I hope that in the months to come that the Republican Party, I think it's pretty clear what the Republican Party is against when it comes to legal immigration and illegal immigration. Now I think it's important for the Republican Party to take the next step and start talking about what we're for. Not just what we're against, but what we're for. And what I think we should be for is for what the vast majority of Americans are for. And that is a 21st century legal immigration system that honors both our legacy as a nation of immigrants and our legacy as a nation of laws. And that's, I, it'll be a real challenge, but it's an important one and one that must be faced and solved. And one of the keys to that issue is we, it's important for people to understand that, that in the Hispanic community, when you're talking about immigration, you're not just talking about statistics. The rhetoric matters because when you're talking about immigration, you're talking about people's mothers and grandmothers and brothers and sisters and neighbors and loved ones and children and friends. It's not just statistics. It's the real lives of real people whose tragedies you know and see. And I hope that over the next few months as this presidential debate unfolds and as the Republican Party's identity for 2012 develops, that all of us will have a role and a voice in crafting a legal immigration solution that honors our legacy as both a nation of immigrants and a nation of laws. And so our goal in this new century is to build for ourselves once again an economy of true prosperity, where people can go out and create jobs for themselves and for others, where people can, through their hard work and sacrifice, leave others better off than themselves, where it's not about taking away from some people to give to others. It's about all of us doing better, being better off. We don't believe that in order for me to do good, you have to do bad. Or in order for me to get ahead, you have to fall behind. Or in order for me to have more, you have to have less. That has never characterized America. In fact, the belief that in America we can all get ahead, the belief in, that in America you can do well and I can do well, the belief in America that I don't have to take away from you to add to me, that belief has characterized the difference between us and the rest of the world. It's the reason why millions of people have left their homeland and come here in search of a better life. And it's the reason why I believe that Americans of Hispanic descent belong in the Republican Party. So I hope we'll work together to make that happen. Thank you very much for having me. God bless you.